time flew by, and before I knew it, the third anniversary of my brother's passing arrived. After the memorial service, Cindy stopped me. This will be the last memorial gathering. Don't ever contact me again. Huh? What do you mean? We're cutting ties for good. I'll even file the necessary paperwork to end our legal relationship. We'll be complete strangers. This can't be. My name is Michelle, and I'm currently a 30-year-old office worker. I have a brother named David. He's seven years older than me and has always been kind. When I was little, he used to take me to the park and play with me, and he was also great at helping me with my studies. My brother and I were the only family I had. After our parents passed away in a car accident when I was 15, my brother got a job and took care of me. He supported me through high school and even helped me attend college. I'm incredibly grateful to him. About five years ago, my brother married a wonderful woman named Cindy. I was thrilled that he found such a great partner. Since he had been like a single father, sacrificing his precious twenties to take care of me, I felt indebted to him. Cindy is elegant, gentle, and a perfect match for my kind-hearted brother. Sometimes, I visit their home, and the three of us share meals together. Cindy has always been very fond of me. I was glad that my brother had built a happy family. But then, something happened. My brother passed away two years ago when he was 35. The cause was cancer that he had been battling for three years. I resented God, wondering why it had to be my family enduring such pain. Yet, despite his own suffering, my brother always wore a smile for me. Michelle, with your lovely smile, I want you to keep laughing. Even though he knew his time was limited, he tried to impart important lessons to me. He believed in maintaining hope and living with a smile. I realized that I shouldn't be the only one wearing a gloomy expression when my brother had made peace with living the rest of his life this way. So, until he passed away, I made an effort to interact with him while wearing a smile. Still, when he did pass, it was incredibly heartbreaking. I cried a lot and felt down for a while. However, I remembered my brother's words from when he was alive and made an effort to live as positively as possible, always wearing a smile. Even though I still haven't fully overcome my brother's death and sometimes feel like crying out of the blue, I know I need to live with a positive outlook, for my brother's sake. About three months after my brother's passing, I visited Cindy, my sister-in-law. However, I was surprised by her appearance, specifically, her clothing. She was dressed in high-end designer outfits, prominently displaying logos. Previously, Cindy had been fashionable but never overtly flaunted her wealth. She used to have a modest and refined image, but now she looked like an Instagram influencer, beautiful on the outside, but it was hard to tell how she earned a living. Michelle, what brings you here all of a sudden? Cindy asked. Oh, well, I was just wondering how you've been. I'm doing well. Cindy said cheerfully. I felt shocked. It almost feels like she has fully adapted to life without him. While I didn't want her to be perpetually sad, and ideally, she'd find a way to recover from my brother's passing. However, it's disheartening that despite it being only three months since my brother's death, she seemed so detached or unburdened. Had he not been such an important presence in her life? It made me wonder if Cindy had already grown accustomed to living without him. As time passed, the third anniversary of my brother's passing arrived. After the memorial service, Cindy, my sister-in-law, stopped me. This will be the last memorial gathering. Don't ever contact me again. What? What do you mean? We're cutting ties completely. I'll even file the paperwork to end our in-law relationship. 
We're strangers now. Cindy said, smiling. Why? How could she? I wondered if Cindy truly loved my brother. Her actions left me questioning. The day after the third anniversary, I had a day off from work. I decided to open the box my brother had left behind, the one I hadn't touched since his death. I'd been avoiding acknowledging his passing, but after the memorial, I felt like I was gradually overcoming it. So, with determination, I opened the box. And because of what Cindy had said, I wanted to confirm what my brother had left behind, to immerse myself in memories. Inside were items that held memories, the music box I made in middle school during industrial arts class, the scarf I knitted for my brother in high school, and photos from a trip abroad we took together to celebrate my university acceptance. Nostalgic. I whispered. The memento box, which my brother asked Cindy to give to me before he passed away, contained items associated with our memories. As I looked through its contents, I reminisced about the moments we shared. He lives on forever in my heart. When I saw the things in this box, I felt like I had finally truly overcome my brother's death. Ultimately, you continued to encourage me until the end. I mused. I wound up the music box, and sweet melodies filled the air. Suddenly, the sound stopped midway. Wondering if it had broken due to its age, I opened the small lid covering the gear mechanism. To my surprise, a folded piece of paper lay inside. What could it be? I carefully unfolded it, revealing my brother's handwritten words, a letter addressed to me. The contents of my brother's letter are as follows. Michelle, I hope this letter reaches you safely. After I found out about my cancer, Cindy discovered the insurance policy. Insurance? You see, I had intended to name you as the beneficiary. Since I'll be gone, and you won't have any blood relatives left, it seemed fitting. Life is unpredictable, and even if I were to marry, you would still be the most important person to me, my beloved sister, Michelle. So, despite getting married, I didn't change the beneficiary to Cindy. Furthermore, as our marriage progressed, I began to suspect that Cindy was more interested in my earnings. Her spending habits became extravagant, and she started making requests for money. Once she learned about the insurance policy, our arguments and fights escalated. And since I've been hospitalized, Cindy rarely visits. It's surprising, isn't it? My brother, having graduated from a prestigious university and working for a major corporation, could have easily supported me through college. Initially, Cindy seemed elegant and sincere when my brother first got married. But appearances can be deceiving. And here's the continuation of my brother's letter. Perhaps Cindy has somehow changed the beneficiary of the insurance from you to herself. So if my insurance money doesn't come to you, it's a complete crime. Consult a lawyer immediately. I was in shock for a while after reading the letter. After regaining some composure, I followed my brother's advice and consulted a law firm right away. The fact that I still hadn't received the insurance money even after the third anniversary of my brother's passing indicated that Cindy had indeed changed the beneficiary without my knowledge. Now it all made sense, the lavish lifestyle Cindy had been leading. In short, Cindy had embezzled the insurance money and was living a life of luxury. The lawyers were empathetic and promptly took up the case with the insurance company. And that's when I learned the shocking truth, the amount of my brother's insurance payout. Apparently, my brother had taken out a life insurance policy soon after our parents' passing, and the final payout was $300,000. The insurance company promptly responded through the lawyer and paid me $300,000. Even though I saw the amount recorded in my passbook, it didn't feel real, I somehow couldn't believe I had that much money. But this was something my brother left for me. 
I intend to use it carefully to live a happy life. Later, Cindy suddenly called me. What's going on? Why are you calling out of the blue? Haven't we cut ties already? Don't play innocent. You set me up, didn't you? Oh really? What are you talking about? I've been accused by the insurance company. I haven't done anything. Oh, come on. Are you still trying to deny it? You changed the beneficiary of the insurance money without authorization, didn't you? What? I didn't change anything without permission. David signed the paper to change it, and I took it to the insurance company. Is that so? I thought this woman was beyond redemption. Even now, she's still claiming her innocence. Well, you see, the fact that the insurance company has accused you means that everything you've done is out in the open. Forensic analysis of the handwriting has already proven that it's not my brother's signature. Oh no, you didn't. Who would have thought you'd cozy up to someone at the insurance company and try to split the insurance money? Why would you? Through a lawyer, the insurance company investigated, and apparently the person in charge quickly confessed to the crime. I don't know the whole truth, but it seems he easily betrayed you, considering that he was approached by you. So, it appears that your guilt is quite significant. This can't be. Well well well. Bad deeds catch up with you, don't they? Make sure you return the money to the insurance company. But I've already spent $60,000. Oh dear. Well, that's your own doing. Anyway, I'll never forgive you. Let's cut ties just as you suggested, perfect strangers. And with that, I hung up the phone and blocked Cindy's number. Later, both Cindy and the insurance company representative who collaborated with her were arrested for fraud. They were each given probation and required to pay half of the $300,000 to the insurance company. Even after using the remaining $90,000 she had on hand for repayment, Cindy still had $60,000 in debt remaining. Currently, she lives a modest life and works nights to repay her debts. Well, it's a case of reaping what she sowed so there's no room for sympathy. On the other hand, I've returned to my daily routine, focusing on saving from my earnings while being frugal. I plan to use the insurance money my brother left me for retirement. Following my brother's advice, I've embraced positivity and a smiling outlook on life, which recently led to a wonderful encounter. He's kind, cherishes me, and we're both in our 30s, even discussing marriage. Every day with him is delightful, and I'm confident that together, we'll build a beautiful family. I'll live a happy life, honoring my brother's memory. How did you find this story? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time.